everyone, welcome back to CJ Explores. We are Charlotte and Corey, and this is our top 10 Australian destinations for 2022. To make it super easy for you guys, we're gonna timestamp all of these locations so you can skip ahead to something you're interested in. Or if you're interested, you can go and check out the full vlog on each destination in the description below. So kicking it off at number 10 is Air Peninsula in South Australia. It's great for road trips and it has a lot of landscape that reminds us so much of England. There is a lot of Cornish flags located around the place and this place is famous for its seafood. Actually, 65% of Australia's seafood comes from South Australia and it is beautiful and it has super quiet beaches, not like the ones on the East Coast, which are always absolutely rammed and full of tourists. Listing off some of the best things you can do in Air Peninsula, you can swim with sea lions and also great white sharks. If you're into that kind of thing, you can do shark cage diving in Port Lincoln. There is great national parks, including the Port Lincoln National Park and Coffin Bay National Park. There are so many places where you can do free camping right on the beaches, and one of our favorite spots there was Streaky Bay. Coming in at number nine is Rottnest Island in Western Australia. Now, Rottnest Island is a nice day trip location just off the coast of Perth. You can go for the day or you can actually go for multiple days because there is accommodation on the island. It ranges from basic kind of glamping camping style up to very luxury accommodation. It's very family friendly and it's also very backpacker friendly, so it's open to all travellers. We actually just went for one day trip here. We took the ferry from Perth, which is the main hub. I think there's three ferry routes, two from Fremantle and one from Perth City. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes on the ferry, so it's not long at all. However, the ferry is quite pricey. That's the only negative people have with this trip is that the ferry can be a bit expensive, but honestly, it's so worth it. We definitely recommend putting Rottnest Island in the budget if you're traveling to WA. Once you're on the island, the best way to get around is actually by bicycle. Most people hire a bike on the island or electric bikes, which we did, which were fantastic because we only had one day there. We could discover a lot more of the island using the electric bikes. You can also walk around the island, but it is quite far. There's a lot of kilometers to cover. And there is also a hop on hop off bus that runs around the island. So that's a really great way to get around too if you haven't been able to hire a bicycle. Some of the best things to do in Rotnes Island is to visit all the amazing beaches. There's really great snorkel spots. The water is very clear and it's not too busy once you get out of the main settlement area. But our favorite places were Parakeet Bay. Another great location is the Basin. It's a natural swimming pool. It's really good for snorkeling and a safe place if you have kids. Just next to that place is Pinky's Beach and this is very family friendly. There's actually a beach club next to it and there's the lighthouse up on the top too. This whole area is really nice and it is within walking distance to the settlement which is the main hub of the island. That's where you'll find all of your cafes and the ferry terminal. However, the best thing to do on Rottnest Island is to go and find the quokka. They are very, very cute and they become very popular, especially because people want to get the quokka selfie with them. They are very friendly little creatures. They're very small miniature versions of the wallabies and they are very used to human interaction. However, please be aware they are wild animals, so do respect their boundaries, but they are more than happy if you want to take a little photo with them because they take the best selfie that we've ever seen. So sticking with the island team, we're going to fly all the way over to Eastern Australia and in Queensland there is an island called Great Cripple Island and it was one of the highlights of our Queensland road trip. We absolutely loved it. It's a short ferry ride from the closest town which is Yuku and you get over there and there is beaches to snorkel, there are reefs to explore, there is hiking opportunities for you all over the island and you could spend days here just walking around the island and exploring all that it has to offer. Great Keppel Island offers basic accommodation, so it's great for backpackers. There is also a cafe, a restaurant, and a bar on site, but unfortunately there is not much more amenities for you because there was a cyclone that wiped out part of this region in the last decade. One of the best parts about Great Keppel Island for us was how secluded it was and how much we just had the beaches to ourselves when we explored. We walked around this island all day and we had a blast, and honestly, we could have stayed here for a lot longer, but we were only there for a day trip, so we just made the most of it. We returned back to Yapoon on the short half an hour ferry and this place took us totally by surprise as well. Just as a side note, Yapoon is an up and coming town in Queensland and we really think that you should add it to your list. There is loads of cafes, loads of restaurants, really trendy, really hip places for you to explore and it is the gateway to Great Keppel Island so put it on your bucket list. Coming in at 
number seven is Litchfield National Park in the Northern Territory. Now when you think of national parks in the Northern Territory, usually most people recommend Kakadu, but we really love Litchfield National Park and we think it has so much to offer. You can take a day trip from Darwin and there's also loads of tours running from Darwin too, so that's a great way to see it. But you can also drive down there because there is designated camping spots and you can spend a few nights camped up there exploring the whole area. It was one of our highlights of the Northern Territory and one of the best things about it was the waterfalls some of which you can only see from a barrier, but some of them you could actually go into and swim, which was really great. When you visit Litchfield National Park, make sure you visit these five destinations, which are the main things to do in the area. You're gonna see a lot of termite mounds by the side of the road if you're road tripping around Australia, but these ones are humongous and they were the biggest ones we saw on our trip. You've also got Bully Rock Hole, which is a great place to take a dip. You're allowed to go in the water here. It's really refreshing. There's loads of little sections of people up and down this whole area. We really enjoyed it and it was so hot in this field, so obviously it was a great place to cool down. There's also Toma Falls and Wangi Falls that are spectacular, but our favorite place was Florence Falls. This was absolutely spectacular. We tried to beat the crowds and go early as we were camped nearby. There was only a few people there when we turned up, but when we left, it was packed. You're allowed to swim here. We swam right up to the waterfall. It was falling down heavy and it was amazing just to swim under that waterfall. It's one of my favourite memories from the Northern Territory and we highly recommend that you go to this waterfall. Now the next spot is featured on many people's Western Australia bucket list. It is Cable Beach and it is absolutely famous for the camel sunsets. You know what I'm talking about. It's the sun setting over the beach with the camel shadows right in front of you. And if you're up for it, you can take a camel yourself and go for a walk along the beach at sunset. We didn't do that, however, we did get to experience the camels. Uh, they just walk around the town before and after sunset, so we were staying pretty close by. We saw a lot of them. They're very smelly, but they make for a beautiful sunset. <laughs> the other thing you can do at Cable Beach is four-wheel driving on the beach, and that is one of the best experiences I think people can have there, is driving up, parking on the beach, and just enjoying the sunset with the camels walking in front of you. It is so magical, and we had some of our most memorable sunsets on this beach. We just really loved it. Now, Cable Beach is located in Broome, which is a very remote part of Australia. In fact, to get there, you have to fly from a domestic location. I don't think they can fly international flights to Broome Airport, or you can include it on your road trip like we did, and it is very far from everywhere else. So I guess that kind of makes it quite special because not a lot of people are able to do it, whether they have the time or the money to do that trip and make it into a big event. But Broome does offer some amazing accommodation. We saw some fantastic resorts when we were staying there. They have great food and restaurants and cafes, and we did sample a few of them, and they're also famous for their pearl industry, which has brought a lot of immigrants into Broome, and you can see that in the architecture of the buildings. Can we call it architecture? Corrugated steel buildings. <laughs> there is a lot of history there with Japanese, Chinese, and East Asian immigrants. Okay, so we're halfway through now our top 10 destinations in Australia and in at number 5 is one of the most magical places in Australia, if not the world, and that is the Daintree National Park. Many people believe that the Amazon is the oldest living rainforest in the world, but it's actually Daintree. It's one of David Attenborough's favourite places in the world and he is quoted as saying that it's the most extraordinary place on earth. So there's two different areas in the park and that's Mossman Gorge and Cape Tribulation. Mossman Gorge actually has a really nice walking trail to a large gorge which you can pay to enter. We actually visited years ago and you didn't have to pay but this time you do. Uh, there's a little shuttle bus that runs you to the main area. You can go for a quick dip there but be careful because it is quite scary up top. Well not scary, it's a little bit dangerous so do, do try and stick to the calmer waters but it's a really beautiful point. And then you continue with your journey up north and that goes into Cape Tribulation area. This is really special, it feels like you're walking into this enchanted dinosaurs. ancient dinosaur land. They have some amazing species of birds, trees, mammals, amphibians and reptiles. However, two of the most famous animals that you can come across in the Daintree are the crocodile. And you can go and take some crocodile tours, you can go see them, sometimes they feed them. We actually didn't take any tours, but we also didn't actually see any crocs, so I'm guessing you have to take the tours because they probably know where they're hiding. Another animal that is famous in the Daintree region is the cassowary. This creature is like a living dinosaur. It's absolutely incredible. 
it's a humongous bird with these great big claws for feet and actually sometimes you see them with their little babies and actually it's the daddy that takes care of the offspring. We actually saw one on our latest trip to the Daintree and it was very exciting. Everybody always has to stop and take photos of them, they're an incredible species of animal. Daintree National Park feels like it holds all of the world's secrets. There's been trees discovered here that people actually thought were extinct. So who knows what else we're going to discover in Daintree National Park, but it's definitely one place that you have to go once in your life. Coming in at number four is Carnarvon Gorge in Queensland, and it was something that we kind of added late to our trip. We needed to kill some time, so we went inland and we found this amazing gorge, which just took us totally back in time, and again, we felt like we were living in the dinosaur age, because this place was just incredible. So to paint a picture for you, we were driving through this dust bowl of a desert and there wasn't much around, but then as soon as we entered into the area of the gorge, everything began to look so green and lush and alive. And there are plenty of different campsites there for you to choose from, which you can use as a base for the main activity at Carnarvon Gorge, which is hiking. And there are so many trails for you to explore. You can spend days, I think you can spend weeks hiking along these trails because there is just so many kilometers. And here you will find some of the ancient Aboriginal rock art, which is protected and very special and sacred. There are over 2,000 examples of Aboriginal rock art here. There are prehistoric cycads, sandstone cliffs, and it is an outback oasis in the middle of the desert. It is just a really special place. You are probably gonna see a lot of wallabies when you visit. You're gonna hear and see a lot of bird life when you visit. It's just such a special place, and if you like hiking, this has to be on your list. So the accommodation options range from pretty basic camping to van life to camper vans, all the way up to luxe camping and cabins and lodges. But you can use this as a base to explore some of the tracks and trails around the area. And some of our favorites were Balumba Bluff, the Art Gallery, and the Amphitheater. Taking the bronze spot in the top 10 places to visit in Australia is Magnetic Island. Magnetic Island is located off the coast of Townsville in Queensland and it is the best destination to go to if you're looking for a fun family holiday but still has quite a lot of amenities for you in the island life. Now if you're looking for an island that has a bit more amenities then you would find maybe a great Keppel in Queensland and this is great because Magnetic Island has actually lots of hotels, restaurants, cafes and it has roads so you can take your car on the ferry or if you have a camper van or a van you can take that across too. There isn't many places to free camp here though, it's only one camping area so you do have to book in but you're more than welcome to take your van or your camper and park there. You can also just take your car across if you want to to park at your accommodation because you can just drive to locations around the island during your stay. You can just take a day trip from Townsville if you like to but we would really recommend you go for at least three days because there's so much to do here. There's so many beaches to discover, walking trails, Lots of nice little restaurants and cafes that could keep you entertained, but there's also some really cute wildlife to meet. On Fort's Walk, which takes you to some World War II bunkers, you'll come across some koalas in the trees. And there's not only koalas to see here, but there's also rock wallabies, which are just the cutest. You can buy some food to feed them if you like to. Make sure you only get the food that is approved for rock wallabies, that's some fruits and a bag of their nibbles. I think you can buy that at the local store. But they are very friendly and they usually have babies but they are very happy to take some food off you and pose for a photo. Whether you are travelling as a family or just backpackers, this place has it all. It really is the place that suits all different types of travellers. We really loved it and we would really love to go back. Plus it has some amazing viewpoints for a sunset. There's something special about going to an island off the coast of the mainland. It just feels that much more exciting and like you are on a far away holiday. So if you are really looking for that holiday tropical destination but you're still wanting your amenities, the Magnetic Island is the place to go to. Now it should come as no surprise that coming in in one of the top spots is Whitsunday Islands. It takes out number two and it is one of the most beautiful places in all of Australia. It is an archipelago of 74 islands for you to explore. Probably best explored by boat but you can fly there too. Uh, we took a sailing trip and we had a beautiful day out on the water, snorkeling, and seeing the best beach in all the world. So if you're planning a day trip over to Whitsunday Islands, your port of call is going to be Airlie Beach, which is the closest town on the mainland of Australia. And from here, there are plenty of options. They will take you on a fast boat, a tall ship, 
a replica ship, anything that you want you can sail over, but if you want to fly there you can fly from other destinations in Australia over to Hamilton Island and then from here you can visit Daydream, Hayman Island and Whitsunday Island. Now Whitsunday Island is home to Whitehaven Beach. It is one of the most beautiful beaches in the world and that is because the sand is made up of a chemical compound called silica. It is 98% silica which makes it super fine and you can use it to exfoliate, you can use it to scrub your diamond rings, it polishes jewellery perfectly and it is just a beautiful place to take a photo on the beach and give all your friends and family that travel envy. <laughs> So we're about to reveal the top destination for Australia in 2022 and you may be thinking surely it's the Great Barrier Reef, they've not mentioned that yet but there's actually a new and upcoming place to visit if you want to discover some marine life and some reef. So taking the first place in top 10 destinations to visit in Australia for 2022 is Ningaloo Reef. Ningaloo Reef is a 300 km long fringe reef. It's actually the world's largest fringe reef and it's located off the coast of Western Australia. The main point of call to visit the reef is actually Exmouth. You can go from here to Cape Range National Park which has an array of beaches that you can go onto and you can just literally walk off the beach and swim directly onto the reef. You're going to see so much here. There's of course the beautiful reef but because of that there's so much wildlife. There is an abundance of tropical rainbow coloured fish, there's rays, there's turtles, there's nursing sharks. Depending what time of year you visit you can see turtles hatching and you can see the migrating whale sharks which is one of the major draw cards for this region. Ningaloo Reef also has Turquoise Bay which also is an award-winning beach in Australia and frequently takes top spot for the best beaches to visit in Oz. Now Ningaloo Reef is an amazing place but what makes it extra special is there's so much to do also in this area. The town of Exmouth is a growing place and it is really booming in popularity especially during the winter season for travellers and van lifers. It's a great town with some really nice cafes but the surrounding natural beauty of the area is really the draw card. Cave Range National Park has of course the beaches and is the gateway to Ningaloo Reef but you also have some incredible hikes. A spectacular place to go to watch the sunrise for a nice morning hike is Charles Knife Gorge and it has been compared to the Grand Canyon of America. Personally, when we visited Ningaloo Reef, we were absolutely blown away. We think it is one of the best destinations in Australia. It definitely deserves a top spot. When people ask us our favourite place, Ningaloo Reef always comes out and it's always the topic of conversation when people talk about the most beautiful places to visit in Australia. So thank you guys for watching. Like we said earlier, everything that we've featured here is going to be listed in the description below in a separate full vlog on each destination. So go and check those out. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you think we missed out any destinations that should have been in the top 10, then comment below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.